Hi, welcome back to the Chicago School of Fusing. I'm Laura Wasilowski and I'm here with Frida Anderson. Today Frida is going to show us her wonderful project. This is called Prairie Flowers and I'm going to show you how to use decorative blades to create many of the little elements in this little quilt, this little fused art quilt. It's beautiful. Thanks. Today I'm going to talk about making prairie flowers and using decorative blades. I've used two decorative blades to help me create the fun texture in this little quilt. I've used the wave blade to make the two outside edges and I've used the decal blade to do the border on the background, the grass in the foreground, and the little leaves. And both of these are 45 millimeter blades that will fit in 45 millimeter rotary handles. Doesn't matter the brand of the blade or the brand of the handle. And you can get these in the scrapbooking section at the fabric store or Laura and I both sell them on our websites. You know what, Frida? I think there's a pinking blade and scallop blade as well. There are, and I use those too. Okay. So the first thing that um, you have to do, obviously, is pick your fabrics. And I've used three different shades of green. These are my hand-dyed fabrics. These are beautiful. Thank wow. you. You're so welcome. I've used brown for the grass, but you could use red or orange or rust for the grass. And then I've used a fabric that gradates from purple to pink for my flowers and a little bit of orange for the stamen in the top of the flowers. And here are those colors again in batik. So I have three different shades of green for if I was using that, and a fun pink for the flower, something for the stamen, and something for the grass. Right, that's beautiful, wow. The first thing that I want to do is fuse my fabrics, and then I want to peel the release paper off. The paper is what comes with the fusible, and I want to take the paper off of my fabric. I want to let it cool, and then peel this off. Oh, look, What's you don't that? want to do that. That's extra fabric underneath How there. How could you do that? I you? don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to save this paper because we're going to use it and keep it intact in one piece. I like release paper. <laughs> I know you do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my um, background piece of fabric and I'm using the deco blade to do that. Notice that I turned my little mat over to the back side because these blades will scar your mat and I don't want to scar the surface of my mat. I'm just going to cut with a fun free-flowing curve when I cut these out and when I do use them I want to press really hard down so that I get a nice clean cut when I'm done and this measures about four by six inches for my background area then I'm going to take my pattern and you're all going to be able to download a PDF pattern on the website and I'm going to take that release paper that I took off of the back of my background fabric I'm going to place it right over my pattern and I'm going to use my Sharpie marker to trace uh, the, the flowers with and then I will take that and oh, that's pretty. I love the gradation. That's really wonder that really helps with the flowers. It does, it? having multiple colors on one piece of fabric. Yeah. I'm gonna place that on the back of my fused pink fabric. I'm gonna put marker side to fuse side of fabric, and then I'm going to use my hot iron to iron it. I would trim this little extra part away so that I don't come down there and get fusible on my iron. And when I have used my hot dry iron, I'll let that cool, and it's a miracle. Look, <laughs> it transfers oh, to the back. It ah, is a miracle. It is a miracle. It's a miracle brought to you by the Chicago School, School of Fusing. <laughs> so I will have put my little background fabric back on my release paper. Mm -hmm. Then I will take my nice sharp scissors and I'll cut out my flower shapes and I'll place those on my background. And I can refer to my pattern or you know what? You can be a little artistic and place them anywhere that you want on your pattern. What a great color combination. Pink and green, my favorite. <laughs> 
Then I'm going to make the stems and the leaves. And again, I've used one of the decorative blades for the leaves. For the stems, I've used that trick of cutting on the bias, just going from corner to corner. I found it doesn't even have to be a true 45 degree angle, just as long as it's a bias cut. That keeps those edges nice and clean, and they don't fray. And then when I fuse them down, they, I can curve them very easily. I've used that deco blade again to cut my leaves out with, and when I cut those, I'm just going to cut a little um, elliptical shape one way, and then an elliptical shape the other way, and I get those little leaf shapes. Pretty fun to, and easy to do. Another great fabric for those leaves. I love that gradation. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome, Frida. And then next I'm going to put a little border around my background. So I have my stems and my leaves on there. This time I've used my wave blade. That's a little bit heavier of a blade. It has a more of an undulating curve to it. Undulating. <laughs> and I have cut these out at about an inch, I'm sorry, a half inch wide with a straight edge on one side and the curve on the other. Then I can just come and tuck these right under the edge edge and um, kind of like a log cabin overlap my edges. Since I'm on my release paper, I can tack fuse this in place. When um, they're all cool, I can peel it up and trim up the little edges so I have a nice clean design to work with. And uh I was just going to say how much I like the word undulate. Undulate. I knew you would like that word. It's kind of a big word. <laughs> a grown-up word. <laughs> Thank you. So now I'm going to do the final stages of my little quilt. I have placed the background with the edge around it on a piece of border fabric. And I want to add one more edge to this using that wave blade. I'm going to cut out with the wave blade again. This time it's three quarters of an inch wide with the wave on one side and the straight on the other. I'm going to square up the outside edge of my background fabric and I will then place this right along the edge and fuse it in place. I'm going to do a pillowcase binding on this so that when I sew that quarter inch seam it will disappear into the back and I'll still have that fun little edge on the outside. What a beautiful finish for the quilt. Thank you. I like that. So next time we're going to talk about the grass, because I don't put that on before I machine quilt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about the machine quilting and the pillowcase binding. This is a terrific little quilt, Frida. Can I have it? For you, Laura, anything. Thank you. <laughs> so next time we're going to talk about the pillowcase binding. We're going to talk about making the grass and machine quilting. Stay tuned and join us again. Press on.